first thought was the 29 teachings because I, I, I just love the 29 teachings. Of course, we know that that's not all the teachings, but those are our prominent teachings. But, you know, I got to thinking about the tracts, and we have so many tracts in the church that teach us about what the church believes and the scriptures that show us in the Word of God where those beliefs come from. Um, but when I got to thinking about it, when we hand out most of our tracts, we're handing them out to the world. And so the first introduction should be to Jesus. And that should be our first introduction. So that's why I chose this tract, is because we need to know, and the world needs to know, that there is a heaven and a hell, and that there is only one path to, to heaven, and there are many paths to hell. Now, contrary to popular belief, the popular belief says there's many ways to, to get to heaven, or there's many ways to God, or there are even many gods, but there's only one God, Amen. and there's only one way to God, and that's to Christ. <laughs> and so our track here is one road leads to heaven, many roads lead to hell, which road will you take? And that's, that's one of the tracks that we need to be handing out um, to the world because they need to know that Jesus is the path, Jesus is the way, and that if we ignore this, then we're going to spend an eternity in hell. And that wasn't made for us. And that's, you know, that's what the end of the track will tell us, is that hell wasn't made for us. It was made for Satan and his, his people, his angels. And so those, that's who the, the hell was made for. So if you open it up and it starts out and it says sin is the only thing that will take you to hell. But sin comes in many disguises. Below are some of the disguises which sin may take in order to damn your soul to a devil's hell. You will go to hell if you, number one, refuse to believe. Now, I'm not going to read all of the scriptures because she only gave me a little bit of time, so I'm not going to read all of them. But the second scripture is in Mark 16 and 16. It says, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. So we first and foremost have to believe. Um, you know, we have to believe that there is a heaven and a hell. We have to believe that there is a God. We have to believe that Jesus died on the cross um, for our sins and that he rose again um, so that we can be saved. Mm -hmm. And there's a belief that we have to have. There's a lot of people out there that don't even believe in a God right. or in God, period. And they just believe that this is it. Right. Uh, so... This, is, this track helps them to see in the scripture. The scripture tells us that, you know, if you believe and be baptized, you're going to be saved. And if you don't, then you're going to be down. It says, neglect the invitation to salvation. Hebrews 2 and 3 says, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by them that heard him? James 4 and 17, Therefore to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. If we neglect the invitation, if we neglect what Christ did for us on the cross, then we're doomed. We're going to go to hell. And, you know, so many times hell is ignored these days. It's not mentioned anymore. And if anything, in these days, in this time, we need to be shouting it from the rooftops. Mm -hmm. We need to be letting people know right. that hell is a real place. And that if we ignore God and Christ's salvation that he freely gave to us, that's where they're going to go. That's where we're going to go. If we ignore salvation, then we are going to go to hell, which is a real place. Make excuses. That second scripture, Romans 2 and 1, Therefore thou art inexcusable, O man. We have no excuse. 
There is no excuse whatsoever. He gave us the word. He's given us the Holy Ghost. He's given us a cloud of witnesses. We have no reason at all, no excuse whatsoever, not to know that heaven is real, hell is real, that Christ died for our sins. Amen. There is no excuse, and that's what the Word tells us. If we wait, that second scripture, Hebrews 12 and 17, For ye know how that afterwards, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, for he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. You know, Tom has had mentioned in his sermon how his brother thinks that he can just wait till the end and get his head chopped off or something like that. And um, we can just wait. And But we don't know when our time is. We don't know what's going to happen when we walk out. We don't even have to. Well, I could have a heart attack right now. You know, anything could happen. We don't know when our appointed time is. So... Waiting is not an option. Now is the time of salvation. Now is the time to seek out Christ. Now is the time. And we need to let people know that because we just don't know. And besides, who would want to wait because God's blessings are so bountiful. And so there's, there's just no words to describe what God's blessings are and that relief that you get from the being relieved from the burden of sin that you have on your life. You may not realize that you even have a burden of sin, but then when you come to God and, and you, you come to Him and you, you get that salvation and you get weight, you become free. And it's, it's, it's amazing, that feeling. It says, Make the pleasures and cares and pride of life your priorities. Matthew 13 and 22. He also that receives seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he becometh unfruitful. Um, I, I was reading the other day and most people, the, the majority of people today, think to have a fulfilling life, they have to have money or riches or fame. Um, that's what they have to have. And um, that's not what you have to have because all of those things can go away in an instant. Um, you know, look at how many people uh, that are men today, you look in the news and men's reputations, now all of a sudden you're seeing people that are famous and now they're being hit with all these claims of sexual abuse from in the past. Or they say something wrong in public and then their name is gone forever. Um, you know, riches, you can be broke overnight. Uh, look at what happened in the 20s with the Great Depression. Mm -hmm. People just went bankrupt overnight. And then they were hanging themselves because mm -hmm. they went bankrupt overnight. We don't know and these things, but we know that Christ and God in heaven is permanent and it's eternal. Mm -hmm. And those are things that we can take to the bank. Amen. You might not be able to take that paycheck to the bank because it might bounce. We, we've seen that on the news as well. You know, those miners, they went to go take those paychecks to the bank and there was nothing there. Their company had filed for bankruptcy. Right. And there was nothing there for them. So we, we don't know. You can't count on the riches of this world. You can't count on fame. You can't count on any of that. Um, also taking, you know, the pleasures and, the, and the, the different things. There are a lot of things to enjoy in this life. And there's nothing wrong with enjoying life. There's, there's nothing wrong with that at all. But when we go to the extreme and we start to begin to put these things before God. And we put these things priority and we make them priority in our life. Then that's where we begin to become wrong. Because God has to be priority in our life. God has to take precedence. He has to be number one in our life. Not hunting and fishing or gaming or whatever it is that, that, it, that you like to do and you do it more than this world. I mean, we can even take a job and it can be more priority to us. 
So, you know, it talks about the cares of the world. Um, go to sleep spiritually. Mark 13, 35, and 36. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh, at even or midnight, or at the cock crowing, or in the morning, lest coming suddenly he finds you sleeping. Um, that scripture covers all the watches of the day. And it covers the, the entire day. And it tells us not to go to sleep spiritually. And we can do that by not fasting and not praying and not uh, coming to church and avoiding the assembling of yourselves together. We, you know, those things make you weak. And when you become so weak, you become weak in the Lord and you become, spirit, uh, you become weak spiritually and you can eventually fall asleep. And when you do that, you backslide. And then when you do that, you're sending yourself to hell. And that's not what we want to do. And that's what the track is trying to tell us to do. It says, and are ungodly. Um, 2 Peter 2 and 9. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptation and to reserve the unjust into the day of judgment to be punished. 2 Peter 3 and 7. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved into fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. Um, to seek worldly gain. Uh, Luke 9 and 25. For what is a man advantaged if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? Um, what do we gain? So be a hypocrite on the back. It says Matthew uh, 23 and 13. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For ye shut up the kingdoms of heaven unto men... For ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. You know, the, Jesus talked a lot to the, the Pharisees and about how they were hypocrites. And they would say one thing and then do another. Mm -hmm. We can't be, you know, my, my husband mentioned the other day, a, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. And um, we can't be that way. We have to have a firm belief and stick to that firm belief. And not have be a hypocrite. You can't say one thing and then do another. Because the world sees. The people see. The people are watching you. And, and so we have to realize that people are watching us. It says the above sins will certainly take you to hell. But there are others which may not, which may not be so obvious. Um, they can be found in one or more of the following classes of people who will... Make hell their eternal abode. But the fearful, the unbelieving, and the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, and which is the second death. Revelation 21 and 8. Hell is an awful place. No mortal on earth can adequately describe the horrors of its terrible torments. O oh, sinner, flee from the wrath to come. Hell was created as a place of punishment for the devil and his angels. If you go there, you will go as an intruder. Don't let Satan blindside you and cause you to fall headlong into that terrible pit called hell. If you find yourself in hell, it will be for eternity. There is no escape. You can avoid that awful place by coming to Jesus and him alone. Acts 4 and 12. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. Amen.